Mabuhay! Ako po si Kenan Gawaran, isang kabataang kapitenyo. Samahan niyo po kami at si Cardinal Chito tuwing linggo sa The Word Exposed ng Jescom TV. Ayong Adlao, I am Demsi Gonzaga from the Orchid City of Tipolog, Mindanao, Philippines. Join us and Cardinal Chito every Sunday on The Word Exposed on Jescom TV. Hi! Siya kong John Kevin Domingo, nagapupay tibag ko kagayaan Philippines. Mga awis kanya yung nga dumanggay kanya mi kanya Cardinal Chito on The Word Exposed on Jescom TV. Agyaman! Friends, greetings of joy and peace. I trust that you are well. Please continue exposing the word with us every Sunday. Subscribe to Jazzcom TV, then watch and share the word exposed on your feed. Thank you. Ciao, mabuhay. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word Incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. Today is the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Jesus addresses the chief priests once again in the Gospel, saying, A king sent his servants to bring people to the wedding feast of his son. The first group refused the invitation, while the second group assaulted the messengers. He sent his servants a third time to invite whoever they see on the streets. Meeting his guests, he spotted a man not in a wedding garment and asked him why he was not properly clad. Not being able to explain, he was thrown out of the banquet. What does this tell us, brothers and sisters? God has prepared everything for us to celebrate with him, but we must do our part. He offers a bountiful life in His kingdom, but we must strive to be worthy of such an offer. Repent and lead a life pleasing to Him. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of His people He will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that He has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The Word of the Lord. I 
restful waters He leads me He refreshes my soul He refreshes my soul I shall live in the house of the Lord In His grace all my days I shall live guides me in right paths for His name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. I shall In the sight of all of my foes You anoint my head with holy oil My cup overflows My cup overflows I shall live in the house of the Lord In His grace all my days I shall live in the house of the Lord In His grace all my days Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord For years to come For years to come I shall live in the house of the Lord In His grace all my days I shall live in the house of the Lord In His grace all my days In His grace all my days A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance in every circumstance and in all things. I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in Him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need, in accord with His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, 
glory forever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Are you ready for the feast? Wow. The feast is ready. It has been prepared by God. But are we ready? Are we prepared to participate in the feast prepared by God? In the first reading from Isaiah, we have one of the images used extensively in the Bible regarding God's kingdom, God's presence, love, and caring. And that is a meal. Oh, a banquet even. Well, everyone enjoys good food, choice wines. And if we, even in small gatherings or a regular meal in the home, if we enjoy preparing a good meal and enjoy consuming a good meal, imagine why even in the Old Testament, one of the images used to talk about about God's bountiful love is a meal, especially if it is an extended meal, a banquet. In the first reading, Isaiah promises to the people of Israel that God is preparing a banquet for them. It is God who will do it. It is God who will prepare the choice food and the choice wine. They just have to come and enjoy what God will prepare. But this is an image. It is not just about food. It is about food also, but not just about food. Part of the banquet is the joy that God will give. Our tears will be wiped away. Our distress, our sorrows will end. And God will prepare for us joy. And when that happens, even death, even death will be conquered by God. The cause of deep sorrow, death, will be vanquished by God. And when people see, all the nations see this banquet of food of joy and of life overflowing, the people will know that the God of Israel is a God who saves. In the end, what God prepares is the banquet of salvation, the banquet of our well-being, eternal well-being, That is what the Lord prepares for us. That is the feast that is ready for us. St. Paul, in the second reading, has an experience of that. As a missionary, he has experienced times of plenty and also times of want. He thanks the Philippians for those moments of plenty The Philippians helped the people, the poor Christians in Jerusalem. And they also helped Paul. And you could see how Paul was a bit shy (laughs) to accept the goodness, the donation of the Philippians. You know, Paul was a hard worker. He wanted uh, to earn his food by his own labor. He did not want to impose on others. But Wow, what a good thing for the Philippians to take care of their apostle. But as an apostle, Paul also have had experiences of lack of want. No, and worse than that, persecution, dangers. Oh, but he does not complain. In all of this, he has this conviction. God gives me strength. And God will provide for me. This is a faith conviction of St. Paul. God always prepares something for me. 
God prepares a banquet for me. And I trust in God, even when it is a moment of dryness and a moment of trial. My faith tells me God will provide for me. Do we have this faith conviction that God prepares a banquet for us? My dear brothers and sisters, when we face trials because of the pandemic, it is not just threats to our health, but also threats to our peace of mind and even all the financial hardships because of the changes in, in our employment. You know, this is the time when our faith invites us to affirm with St. Paul, God has prepared something for me and God will provide. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Matthew Jesus began to address the chief priests and elders of the people once more using parables. The reign of God may be likened to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the wedding, but they refused to come. A second time, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who were invited, See, I have my dinner prepared. My bullocks and corn-fed cattle are killed. Everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went their way, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, insulted them, and killed them. At this, the king grew furious and sent his army to destroy those murderers and burn their city. Then he said to his servants, The banquet is ready, but those who were invited were unfit to come. That is why you must go out into the byroads and invite to the wedding anyone you come upon. The servants then went out into the byroads and rounded up everyone they met, bad as well as good. This filled the wedding hall with banqueters. When the king came in to meet the guests, however, he caught sight of a man not properly dressed for a wedding feast. My friend, he said, how is it you came in here not properly dressed? The man had nothing to say. The king then said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him out into the night to wail and grind his teeth. The invited are many, the elect are few. The Gospel of the Lord. The banquet is ready. Are we ready? God has prepared for us a bountiful meal, and uh, it includes not just choice food and choice wines, but also peace of mind, you know, healing of our sorrows, and even victory over death. That was promised in the prophecy of Isaiah. And the whole world will know that God is the God of salvation when they see the banquet of Israel. And St. Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, reiterates that in his life as an apostle, he has seen it all, a time of plenty and also a time of want. But he has this faith conviction, God provides for his needs. The question is, what will we do? Will we go to the banquet? This is the message of the gospel. Jesus addresses again the chief priests and the scribes, those who claim to know the scriptures and who can almost, through their knowledge, predict how the kingdom of God will come about. And Jesus uses 
the image of a banquet as a parable to them. The king prepares a wedding banquet for his son. Now, who is the king? God. And who is the son? Jesus. The wedding of heaven and earth that will happen in Jesus. The wedding which is the seal of the covenant between God and God's people in the Son, Jesus. Now, God prepared everything, you know, telling us that salvation history is God's action. The, the inauguration of God's kingdom is God's full action. God prepared everything. And the servants were sent to invite people. And who were those invited? Well, we can pursue. Again, the chief priests, the Pharisees, the scribes. What did they do with the invitation? Some ignored the invitation. Some said they had better things to do than attend the wedding banquet. And others even became violent. No, they mis they manhandled no the uh, the and slaughtered the servants. Imagine uh, you're being invited and you kill the one sending the invitation. Wow, this uh, infuriated the king. He did not want his the wedding banquet of his son to go to waste. So the servants were asked to go to the streets and to invite everyone, good and bad alike. Okay? The banquet was open to everyone. Now, let us not think that, oh, okay, so no effort at all. I will have a free meal and I can go just like that. But the king saw someone who was not wearing the wedding garment and he was asked to be expelled telling us that while God prepares a banquet we should also be ready to participate in the banquet the invitation of God does not absolve us of any responsibility so the scribes and Pharisees have their responsibility to respond to the invitation we who have been invited, thanks to the open invitation, we should also respond by preparing ourselves to be part of the banquet. Worthily, the wedding garment, later on we know, put on Christ. Christ is the garment that we should put on that will prepare us to participate in the banquet. So, huh? it is ready. Are we ready? Tomorrow, October the 12th, is the Feast of Our Lady of the Pillar. They said that uh, Our Lady of the Pillar was an, not an apparition, but a visitation. This occurred before the Assumption of Mary into heaven. St. James was on mission in Spain. And wow, he did not get the response that he was expecting. So he was really demoralized, wanting to give up. And in one moment of sadness and weakness, sleeping there along the Ebron River, he was awakened by the singing of angels, angels carrying a pillar on which sat Our Lady. And Our Lady reminded St. James of the mission that her son Jesus had prepared for them and that they should not allow anxiety and lack of success to withdraw, let them withdraw themselves from the invitation to be part of the wedding banquet. So Our Lady encourages us 
You have been invited to a banquet, whether it is a mission, whether it is a hardship. Be ready. Join the banquet. Get up. Do your mission. And whatever you are doing, remember that is your participation in the great banquet of love and peace called the kingdom of God. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. Mabuhay! Ako po si Kenan Gawaran, isang kabataang kapitenyo. Samahan niyo po kami at si Cardinal Chito tuwing linggo sa The Word Exposed ng Jescom TV. Ayong Adlaw, I am Demsi Gonzaga from the Orchid City of Tipolog, Mindanao, Philippines. Join us and Cardinal Chito every Sunday on The Word Exposed on Jescom TV. Hi! Siya kong John Kevin Domingo, nagapupay tibaggaw kagayan Philippines. Mga awis kanya yung madumanggay kanya mi kan ni Cardinal Chito on The Word Exposed on Jescom TV. Agyaman! Friends, greetings of joy and peace. I trust that you are well. Please continue exposing the word with us every Sunday. Subscribe to Jazzcom TV, then watch and share the word exposed on your feed. Thank you. The sun danced over Fatima, Portugal on October the 13th, 1917. It was a sign given to three young shepherds by a beautiful woman who introduced herself to them as the Lady of the Rosary. The eldest of these mystics, Lucia dos Santos, would live long and become a Carmelite nun, not only to advocate the praying of the Rosary, but also to spread devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Her younger cousins, Francisco and Jacinta Marto, went home to heaven very young. Pope Francis canonized the siblings in 2017. While their lives were rather brief, their faith is inspiring and worth imitating. Their commitment to pray the rosary was coupled with holy desires, which we will look into today. Saint Francisco was 10 when he succumbed to influenza in 1919. Unlike other children his age, this saintly boy preferred spending time praying before the Blessed Eucharist, which he called the hidden Jesus. Being alone with the Eucharistic Lord was his way of comforting Jesus, which was his goal when he goes to heaven. He once said, The following year, due to complications stemming from influenza, Saint Jacinta died at the age of nine. Like her older brother, the little girl demonstrated a profound understanding of the grace they received from the apparition of Our Lady. She believed that her participation in the work of salvation was to endure the pain and suffering she got from her illness and to offer it for the conversion of sinners. She confided to Lucia, We can only marvel at the faith of these young people who took to heart the message of the Lady of the Rosary, to love God, to pray, and to offer their little sacrifices daily, not only for their own salvation, but also for others who do not pray 
and had no one to pray for them. Their cousin, Sister Lucia, remembered them this way in her memoirs. There you go, brothers and sisters, young people with profound faith and holy desires. Thanks to the Lady of the Rosary for touching the lives of these people. Saints Francisco and Jacinta, pray for us, especially our young ones. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, recall how God has prepared everything for your good. Alalahanin mo kung paanong inihanda na ng Diyos ang lahat-lahat para sa kabutihan mo. The second point is, what have been the ways by which you have ignored or rejected God's invitation? Sa anong mga pamamaraan mo itinanggi o nilabanan pa nga ang imbitasyon ng Diyos. Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people, so that as Your Word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God may find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. We hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.